What's so interesting at the moment is the way in which you expand outside of Argentina, already pretty dominant there, into Mexico. Why was Mexico so attractive? What is it that really boosts the business there? Mexico is an amazing market where you only have 49 banks and yet 90% of all transactions are still conducted in cash right on the border with the United States. And so the opportunity for financial inclusion and for technology in financial services in Mexico is ginormous. You have 70 million people who've never had a debit card, who've never been able to save, who've never been able to take payments. And so as this digitizes in the next decade, we want to be there and we want to bet on it big. That's why we just acquired a bank in Mexico and we can now offer everything from payments to savings accounts, high yield savings accounts in Mexico, and also charging services, investments, and a variety of things making up an ecosystem of all financial services. VCs have been betting on you big, I'm sure, because of that intersection of, well, your experience at Bridgewater with Soros, with Goldman, you work there, you're bringing this financial focus to your home. What are some of the issues in particular when you're thinking of oh, inflation, when you're thinking of political instability? I mean, we think at the moment of one of the front runners for Argentina in particular, talking of dollarization, an end to the central bank. How does that affect you as a business leader? I think the digitization of payments is a global trend that is going to happen everywhere. And in emerging markets, it has the opportunity to leapfrog developed markets. As we saw, China did it faster than many other developed markets like the Europeans or even Japan. And we then saw it in India, then we saw it in Brazil. And now in the rest of Latin America, we see an amazing opportunity. We launched Walla five and a half years ago in Argentina. We have 17% of the adults in the country and we give them tools to save. With Walla, they can buy dollars already, they can invest in U.S. equities, they can have the best high-yield savings account in the country and protect themselves against inflation. But we also see that in Colombia, we also see that in Mexico. So we see an opportunity that is very wide-ranging in a region of the world that is lagging because only 20% of payments are digital. One of the very few things I know is that in the future, that number is going to go to 40 to 60 to 80 as it did in Brazil and India. So it's a one-way street and the political noise has always been there and we need to learn to live with it. But I do think that in the case of Argentina, it is moving toward a more uh, pro-market stance with the elections that are coming up in October. Pierre Paolo, if Javier Millet is successful and he does dollarize the economy and he does close the central bank, how do you prepare Walla for that? How do you change your business model to take that into account? Well, of course, the, the first thing is that, is that in Argentina, only banks are allowed to have dollar accounts already. We already offer dollar trading in Walla, whereas fintechs and wallets cannot do it. And there, we have the strength of having fully regulated entities that allow us to do everything from investments to lending, and in this case, dollar accounts. Uh, we've seen this. I mean, what, what I think will happen in Argentina is that we're going to move toward a more open capital account. And that's how we already operate in Mexico. That's how we already operate in Colombia. And once again, the speed of the digitization of services with a dollar would only yes. accelerate. So in that sense, it would be actually very positive for the business. And I think banks would be able to do longer term lending. Today, our longest loan in the in a context of 100 percent inflation is two years. Just two years. Imagine that in a country where you offer, you know, 30 30 year fixed mortgages. So the opportunity yes. for lending in places like Argentina is huge because only seven to eight percent of people have access to formal uh, credit today. And in a dollarized economy, I think that number would go up a lot. Pierre Paolo, quickly, you know, Mexico is a parallel example. Cash is king. Transactions are cash. So what's the technology opportunity for you there, AI or otherwise? Well, what we have in Mexico is, first of all, a full ecosystem of services. Pay your bills, top up your cell phone, have a debit card, pay for Netflix or Spotify, or be able to sign up even for Bloomberg. All those things Mexicans couldn't do in the past because they were condemned to cash. They even charged you a fee to pay your water bill or your electricity bill. Walla does away with all that, and it lets you create a credit history like we have in Argentina, where we have already done more than 5 million loans. And that gives us the opportunity to create a new credit history and also right. offer a high-yield savings account, which in Mexico is a huge differential in a market where most people got zero for their money and no longer.